Our next guest speaker, another all-star, Yasser al Ghamdi, Cyber Defense Center Director at STC. Yasser is the Cyber Defense Center Director at STC Company, works to manage and lead the operations threat monitoring, incident response, digital forensics, and threat hunting to protect STC's infrastructure and assets and limit the impact of business continuity. Yasser holds a master's degree in computer science from DePaul University and has around 13 years of dedicated experience in the cybersecurity domain, participating in building and operating cybersecurity departments and functions such as the Cyber Defense Center, digital forensics, and incident response, vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, and threat intelligence. Yasser's subject will be building a cyber defense center to protect the nation. Please welcome Yasser Al Ghamdi. Shukran Taklad. Assalamu alaikum, Jamian. Hayakum Allah. Kebbis al Focus, inshallah, and Kuwais, inshallah. Tarafi, Gahwa Taiba here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Yasser Ghamdi. I'm Cyber Defense, Center, uh, Cyber Defense Center Director working for STC. And today we'll talk about building a Cyber Defense Center to protect the nation. The topic is going to be around the three years of uh, our journey in order to revamp our operation. We'll shed some light to uh, we shed some light to our challenge that we have been facing, the way our strategy that we have building in order to to overcome this uh, challenge, and then outcomes that we'll be able to reach. Uh, طيب. Firstly, we'll talk about the role of CDC. It's very important because CDC sometimes terminology is different. People, they say this is SOC and this is CDC. So let's clarify what is the role of CDC. It has three main uh, functions. The first one is the threat monitoring, which is responsible for 24-7 uh, threat monitoring uh, across all the attacks attacking uh, STC. Also, uh, they are responsible on uh, uh, L1, L2 uh, threat monitoring. They are responsible for the platform management and content management as well. They are responsible on the delivery side, so they are generating all the reports that we are looking for. Uh, in addition to that, we have another function, which is a DFIR, Digital Forensic Science Response. These people, they are doing the L3 incident response, so an escalated incident to them, they will take it as a compromise and try to deal with it. They are also responsible to provide uh, such as like a forensics investigation. This is not only the cyber forensics, but also any type of forensics such as legal issues, fraud issues as well. In addition, we are providing malware analysis and reverse engineering if there is a need for it. The third function is advanced threat analytic, uh, threat hunting. This is the advanced practice that we have inside the CDC. So they are responsible to perform the threat hunting operation during the year. In addition, they are responsible to enable all the machine learning and create a lot of specific use cases as a machine learning in order to, to capture attack using the machine. Uh, we have more than 50 surfaces. We're talking about surfaces and subsurfaces that we're providing. And we have more than uh, 40 people working for, uh, for the Cyber Defense Center. Why we believe this is we are protecting the nation, not protecting the STC, because of the fact that STC, if any compromise on any impact happen to all any of uh, critical uh, infrastructure of the telecom, not only going to impact STC, but also it's going to impact the country, the connectivities, the infrastructure, everything in the, the, the country. So, we, we put this in our mind that we, nurse, we, not, we are not just protecting STC, but we're protecting the, the country itself. Of our, of our coming challenge, the firstly, uh, the top challenge that we have been facing that when I, when I joined STC in 2019, I found that the first thing, they were working as a reactive. So there is no, uh, so just if there is a problem happened, they will analyze it and try to learn from it, which is, it's gonna increase the impact to STC. It will have all the time incident and you can learn from it. Another thing, uh, they are working, uh, the feasibility is uh, around like 5% of the total of STC assets. They're not covering everything. Um, the, the use cases or the detection capability is not good. There is a limitation in it. There is a limitation in incident response capability as well. And there is a, a lot of limitation in automation. So everything is doing manual. 
let's assume we, had, we have a very huge technology that we need to access in order to investigate. Everything is done manual. And the last thing, they are focusing more on the IT side. They just ignore 100% the telecom side, which is, this is not the right way. In addition to that, STC has a very huge footprint. So today we're not talking about the company that they have more than 30,000 endpoints. They have more than 100,000 nodes. They have more than 10,000 server to, as a part of, the, of their uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have more than 250 applications, it's different applications, whether it's a corporate or the, whether it's silicon and et cetera. Uh, we have more than 40 terabytes daily. We are collecting this from the system and try to analyze it. And uh, the last point, we are dealing with more than 1,000. It's not an incident, but something that you have to look at. We call it incident, but it's not 100% incident. But we need to take a look, to investigate, to analyze, to make sure this is not, there is no impact behind this one. So this is a very huge footprint that we are dealing with. So when we, we need, in 2019, when we start to invest more and more in CDC, the drive, driving this investment is a different value. The first one, we need to achieve better visibilities. As I told you, uh, the visibility was very low. The second thing is we would like to have better uh, detection capabilities, better uh, investigation, also better reporting, and this is something very great for, for management, also to give them the right uh, data in order to take decisions on it. Also, to optimize the resources side, we have a huge CAPEX and OPEX, we have a huge uh, data to deal with it, so optimization is very principle that we need always to look after. And the last thing, which is the most important thing, is to reduce the impact to STC business. We need STC business always to work in fine with, 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 with no inter interruption in that area. So what is our uh, approach in this area? We, we adopt very holistic approach in this area, where we start firstly by building a plan. Nobody can work without a plan, so you have to have a plan. Plan what's gonna happen inside the plan or strategy. Firstly, we, what pillar we would like to achieve, what initiatives, what does it mean if I want to increase maturity, what things that they have to do. In addition to that, we have to build our strategy from vision, mission, drivers, consumer, uh, stakeholders, uh, what is the service they're gonna provide it, what is uh, our process and procedure in this area. Uh, anything like a governance model is very important as well. Our uh, technology stack, this is all important for us to identify in the first stage. And then start to establish. So we start with the core capabilities, which is, there is no CDC gonna work in the world without that having this core capabilities, which is feasibility, detection, incident management, uh, platform management, this is very core things. Once we build it, we start to drive maturity in this area. So we adopt a proactive approach, which was a big challenge that we are dealing with. We are focusing more on the telecom side as well, and we have uh, enhanced our process in this area as well. We build the playbook, better playbook, uh, to deal with attack. And then we'll move to advanced uh, practices where we adopt two things, very critical two things, the automation part, and the machine learning part. And we'll talk more about these two things. And then we start to measuring our success. So is our KPI is good? Can we enhance more on this area? Is our process is good? Is our services that we are providing, we need to enhance this area as well? So this is more of enhancing all the time. You have to enhance all the time, not just to rely what we have uh, uh, to have to, to, reach, uh, to reach it. And then look for future. This is very important. Once you reach a very good stage, so what are you gonna do in future? So one of the things that we're talking about, usually cybersecurity people, they don't, the business uh, people, they don't know what we are doing exactly. So we need to establish that trust, the integration of the business, talk the same language, understand what their problems and try to fix it, if we'll be able to fix it. Another thing is we have to integrate the emerging technologies. So a company like STC, they always like expand and try to to, to have more industries on this part. So you have to have a mature process. So today, STC uh, invest in IoT. So what's gonna happen with IoT? So we need to have a mature process to adopt these emerging technologies, build the right detection capabilities, and says response capabilities, et cetera, in order to helping the business to go further and further. And also, one of our uh, objectives to be regional and global leaders in the market, community, this is why I'm here today, so we need to have more interaction with the community and try to present what we have done and to have more collaboration and partnership. The last thing is innovation. We have to increase the culture of innovation. We have to let the people 
try to build more product, more solutions, try to find uh, a lot of good things that can help us to, to, to be part of the innovation. And if there is a chance, this product or platform to go further and to sell this to the customer is going to be great. So this is our holistic view. Starting with the strategy, so as I told you, we build our strategy, we identify all the initiatives that we, we need to like to have maturity on it, and then we build all the, the things that I'm talking about, like drivers, consumer services, etc. So the, before, I'm sorry, for the challenge part, before talking about the strategy, most of the work was ad, ad hoc work. So there is no right direction, there is no commitment to go that direction. We go with, with what's called it's a fashion. So if this year we're talking about something great, so let's do it. But there is no three years, five years uh, direction or strategy that we have to follow with step by step, not just to, to go out of the path. So this is very important, this is a challenge. And the, the, the solution, we build that, and the outcome, as I told you before, is all of these uh, components. And then we start to enhance the core capabilities. So the first two things, detection and response. This is very critical. I know for sure this is the most important function that we are providing. Challenge we are facing that uh, the feasibility ratio was very low. The detection capabilities of stack or use cases was very small or low and it's not covering anything in, in what you should cover. The response, we are well relying on the partner to re do the response, third party partner, and this is our team inside the, 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 the center. And we were having an, a very immature MTD, uh, managed time, uh, mean time to detect and mean time to response. The solution, uh, we increase our feasibility, so we integrate with thousands of thousands of new assets. We onboard it to be part of our uh, radar. And then we do a huge alignment with the MITER framework. So this is, uh, we build hundreds of hundreds of cases. This is a new one in order to, to detect attack. Also, we, uh, we, we, we build the capability inside our team. So today, our team, IR response team, is one of the best that in Saudi Arabia. So they are dealing with all type of attacks without relying with our uh, partner to, to do, do a tennis of us. Uh, uh, outcome, today we have facilitated more than 100,000 uh, nodes. We are seeing all activities uh, happen inside, whether it's a direct integration with the system or integrated with another system that gives me huge visibility on this, uh, what's happening in that area. Uh, MITRE attack, we built more than 1,000 uh, rules uh, specifically related to MITRE attack. Uh, technology integration, we integrate with more, we, we integrate with all security controls that we have it, and we build a customized and specific use cases for these technologies. For example, access controls, very huge, uh, important uh, technology that we have. So we have to integrate with all the systems, and each system try to build a very custom specific use cases if this happens in the access control system, we'll be able to detect it and try to, to, to respond on it. Time to response, we were having more than eight hours. Today we have more than, uh, less than one hour just to respond to all type of attack, 24-7. Uh, another pillar is the hunting and threat intelligence. So we, again, we're working as a reactive. We don't have good integration with the threat intelligence uh, operation. And uh, what we have be built in this area, firstly, we adopt the proactive approaches. So we are look after what's happening in the world and what matter is says in order to build it. And another thing, this is very something that I'm very proud of it. We do we do full integration with threat intelligence operation. So today, anything happen in in US, in Europe, in Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, Definitely, there is a process to get this report, understand what's happening there, and try to do threat hunting inside the environment, and build that use case to take that type of attack if it happened to attack STC in future. This is keep us always uh, updated what's happening in the world, and try always to see what's new and to try to deal with it. And also, we establish something called Sayat. This is a platform. It's a threat hunting bounty platform. Uh, it's the same like bug bounty, but this is different. Maybe all the people know about bug bounty where we discover vulnerabilities. But in this area, now we are not discovering vulnerabilities. We're discovering there is a compromise. So this is a platform, we put a lot of challenge. Data, bring it from STC. There is a researcher inside STC. They will take a look at this data and try to find if there is unhidden, a hidden attack that we don't know about it. If somebody tries to get something, we'll give a score, and then there is a scoreboard, and we will get a lot of... Uh, amazing prices and reward of this. Uh, this has been built internally inside the uh, STC. 
Outcomes, we conduct more than 70 hunt campaign inside the STC, whether in targeting application, uh, infrastructure, and etc. cetera. Uh, we have deal with more than 200 threat intelligence research. There is action that comes to us. We have to deal if this, if we have to do action on this, whether to do threat hunting, build use case accordingly. Uh, threat hunting bounty today, because this is very new, uh, we just established it last year, so currently we have submit more than 20 challenge and people will be able to react to this challenge, uh, find some very interesting observation and try to action it fastly. Uh, the good thing is not a compromise, but there is some of, uh, observation that we need to deal with it. The third thing is measuring performance and reporting. Why this is important? Because of, without having a performance measurement, you don't know if you are doing good or not. And the last thing, uh, the second point is reporting. Without having a very good reporting, usually the management, they don't know what is the value behind you, whether it's talking about inside the cyber or outside cyber. So you have always to have the right way, the, high, the right data to be shared in order to, to understand people, to understand what they are doing inside it, and what is the value behind you. So briefly, just for the performance issues, just we were having four SLE and KBI to measure, which is, doesn't make any sense because we have a huge operation. And uh, for the reporting side, um, we were just having one report that doesn't give what we are looking for, and etc. What we have done, we, ha we revamped everything. So today we have a KBI, an SLA, or OLA, for anything that we are doing inside the cyber. So this is huge. We have, uh, I will give some information about how many. And then another part, we revamp our reporting. So we have weekly, monthly, different integration with different uh, external, uh, like RMC, risk management uh, committee, and etc. cetera. Uh, we have more than 20 SLA and KBI currently, and we are also expanding this area. Um, this is include the, not only the incident management, but also incident management, platform, content, and etc. threat hunting. And also, we have different reporting dashboards, more than 70 uh, dashboards, just related to the reporting. And we build, for the critical application inside the CC, we build a dashboard for each critical. So we have a specific dashboard for my STC, for example, because this is very critical for us. It's all our millions come to STC come from that uh, system. So this is dashboard, look after the attacks, look after the access, look after all different pillars and that related to my STC itself. So this is, we established the core capability. So what is then gonna be next is the innovation part. So the first thing that we innovate, start to do automation. Again, I've told you that most of our work is manual. It, we take huge time in order to do something. So for the automation, this is our challenge. And this is take huge time. Uh, even if I want to put very aggressive KPIs, I cannot do it while people do take huge time in order to do analysis. So I have to balance between the people effort and also the machine or the system that, uh, the collection of logs that is gonna take time. Uh, so, uh, Firstly, we establish automation as a surface, and then we bring a SOAR. And SOAR has two uh, main scopes. We finished the first scope, and we're, we're currently working on the other scope. The first scope was targeting the main playbook, which is the incident management playbook. So, like, for example, malware, reconnaissance, C2, and et cetera, phishing, spam. This is the main thing that uh, it reduced the time for analysis. So, instead of people, they just spend time to collect data, spend time to do analysis, spend time to do action, everything is gonna be part of the bill book. So the, all the collection is gonna be happened directly, and then you do analysis, and then the action is gonna be happened directly uh, without trying to, to communicate with another people in order to do action. Uh, the second phase of the SOAR is to cover all the repeated tasks inside the CDC. Anything repeated, whether it's weekly, daily, monthly, we have to put it as a playbook. This is the same concept of the, I have freed like a sock list, which is Netflix currently, they are adopting this area. Anything that you, there is a room to, to automate it, just automate it. For example, a health check of your systems. I have like seven, eight technologies. So should we do this manually? No, we can run a playbook daily to do health check. If, uh, for example, another thing like a forensic collection. So sometimes we collect this from different system. Let's play, play, uh, build a playbook to collect this. And etc. Like, uh, for example, in C request, I, I know for certain all of you uh, give them there is ICs come from NC, there is release notes. So enough to just deal it manually, you can build a playbook for this as well. And etc. We are building currently in the radar more than 30 uh, playbook, new playbook just to tackle this area. 
And the last thing is the threat hunting. We do a lot of manual collection. Let's try also to automate it. Uh, as I told you, in order to do automation, you have to integrate a lot of technologies. Uh, currently, we have more than 20 technologies inside the, the STC to integrate in order to do action or collection, or, or collection of, uh, of data. Um, automation uh, workflow, as I told you, we are about to have like 40. So this is going to mainly automate more than 90% of what we are doing. And if we discover something new, we have operation for this. If we discover some, something new that we need to repeat uh, to, to automate it, we'll, we'll get automate it. Start step by step to build the book and try to automate it. Um, uh, as I told you, it's a collection, doing action, and, and it's a communication as well. For the data analytic part, which is the machine learning, uh, uh, first challenge we are facing that is this is very huge, has a very huge log size. So it's very hard for the team. If I bring 100 people, it's not easy for them to, to, to discover everything. And etc. we are working in the telecom industry. It's not IT. It's not easy to find a huge expert in this area. Sometimes something happened in our 4G core or or HLR, VLR. It's not easy for people to understand what's happening inside. So get the help from the machine learning is very important for you. So the machine learning will do clustering, baselining of that logs, and try to identify threshold that this is normal. And there is, if, if anything out of the normality, it will give you alert on this area. This is going to help you a lot. So we start to, as, as told you, to enable this in our machines, our systems. We already have it embedded. Machine learning, and etc. We build, uh, we bring UBA, for example, which has more than 50 use cases currently, and we are investing with the custom and custom use cases on different platform. Like we build the data analytic platform, we have very customized use cases, different flavor of customized of use cases in order to do machine learning for you. Uh, okay, so this is just high level what we have done from planning. Uh, building the uh, core capabilities and try to enhance and then go with advanced practices. What we have been learned last three years, this is very important for us. So I will share some of thoughts for that area. The first one, you have to start with strategy. Without having a strategy, this is gonna be, you are, you are having ad hoc culture, you are implementing this. So this year we love to have SOAR. Next year, let's just ignore SOAR because something new call, we have to have X. This is wrong. You have to have a clear strategy, and there is execution. Somebody tried to monitor your execution during three years, five years. So it's very important always to have structured uh, strategy. Then you have to build a very solid operating model. This is, uh, will tell you what you have to do in this surface, uh, what you have to do as a part of your uh, center, but also what things you have to do with other people. What is my interaction with the risk team? What's my interaction? Um, for GRC team, for example, with the strategy team, with IT sectors, and etc. The third thing is to have full visibility. So, if you don't have visibility, imagine you are the best in the world on creating use cases and you have the best technology. But if you don't integrate this system, this is going to be useless. So, first thing is always to onboard all of these technology under your umbrella. You have to see logs from it, you have to install agent on it. So, this is very important. Without having this, you're not going to be able to achieve your objectives. And then, once you have all of that capability, you have to build uh, uh, the right use cases, and also you have to build um, instant response capabilities. So today, you have alert, and then you don't have the right team to deal with that alert to understand, to, to run all the incident response process across this alert and be able to identify what's, what's the problem, what's the entry point, what he's doing inside, and etc. If you don't have that team, so you're going to have a lot of alert, but nobody's look at, at that alert, which is this another problem. I have seen previously my, when I working with, with, with uh, Syed, because I was responsible for incident response across Saudi Arabia, I have seen a lot of good use cases, good alerting, but they, they don't have team to deal with it. So this is why they are getting more and more compromised. You have to invest in automation machine learning. This is very, very important things that, not only when I'm investing today, this is the, our main focus to invest huge. Automation to reduce the headache, to reduce the time to deal with things, to start to focus on the things that you should focus on it, and instead of spend time to deal with adware, spyware, that you take all your time while there is another attacker get inside your environment. Machine learning is very important as well because of the fact that we are dealing today with very huge log size. It's not like b b before. We are talking about logs from OS, uh, logs from application. 
logs, logs from the technology, cyber security technology. If you don't have, you, you, build, you, you are not building this machine learning culture, you will, you will never be able to capture everything that's targeting you, your environment, especially environment like STC. Uh, adapt proactive approach. Again, why this is important? Because big problem if you are waiting people to compromise you and learn from it. You, can, you have him back. So what is the value behind you? You have always to be bef one step before the attacker. You understand what's happening in Ukraine, uh, Ukraine for example. You understand what's happening in, in, in Qatar, for example. And try def speedily to try to, to build the right detection capabilities in order if this happened to you, you will be able to, to deal with it. Don't rely on ICs. ICs is not going to help you. ICs, each attacker, you will change ICs each time you will compromise a new, new area. So you have to focus more on the TBs, tactic, techniques, and procedure, and try to build the right use cases before to get any problem. In order, if it's happened to you, you will be able to detect it. Uh, hyper delivery model where you have current capabilities, but at the same time, you have a very great partner that you're going to help you. This is very good. Always, because sometimes you are working something that you believe this is the right way, and then you don't have the, that external look. So you have always to have a partner with you. You have to always to exchange. You have always to collaborate in order for you to make sure that you're not only focusing what you thought about, but also the other people, they bring good data for you. Show value to executive. One of the things that I have learned is to see that we need to show our values to executive. They are spending millions of million real for you. And uh, this is the biggest uh, like, budget I have dealt with it inside STC. So if they didn't, didn't see the value, the value is not you are good, because they don't know if you are uh, good or not. The value, they need to see how good you are through the language that you like, they like. So always you have to interact with the, with the executive. You have to send them a lot of things. You have to show them your initiative. You have to show them your, your progress in this area. You have to give them different flavor of, of reporting. This is not only going to show value, but also it helped them to answer the question coming from outside. And also give them the insight about the value that you are doing inside. So this is very important them always to have that uh, reporting. The executive don't stop to do that a lot. You have to create a lot of templates and try always to to edu educate your executive about what you are doing and what is the value that you are delivering. Uh, Listen to your actionable KPI. KPI is very important, so you have to reduce all the time. You have to see if there is any problem. Target, yeah, yeah, KPI is not being met. You have to understand why. Just we are running of time. Optimize data is very important. It's not just that. When you optimize data, you will reduce the headache, and at the same time, you reduce the cost you are dealing with. Uh, it's not only SIM. This is one thing that I have seen in multiple places, where they just bring the SIM and they say, yes, we are doing cyber defense center, which is, this is usually wrong. Uh, for fact, a statistic says EDR is captured around 60% of the attack worldwide. So you have to invest in EDR, SIM, NDR. You have to bring a SOAR. You have to bring different flavor of technology to help you. This is not just a SIM. Uh, build simple and easy uh, process to follow. Uh, sometimes, Entities, they bring uh, consultant to build their process procedure, and they give you very nice 200 pages, but nobody's following this. Nobody even read it, which is you have something, but people, they are doing something different. So make it simple. Let the people, your technical team, build it. Even two pages, three pages, fine. But let them build it, and they believe in it, and they always do, do this. Uh, they are following this process procedure. Uh, establish effective governance model. Why we need to have a governance model? For the fact that today, uh, for example, I'm dealing for, with 5,000 5, incidents per, 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 per month, and I have more than 50, uh, 40 people, and I have different tasks. How can you make sure the quality is going to be the same for all these incidents and going to be the same for all unless they are working? It's very hard. It's not easy, to be honest. This is why you need to have a governance uh, culture inside your, your, your department. So you have to create... Um, um, uh, that engagement point where you have to understand what they are doing, you have to do uh, a lot of technical audit on them, sampling, you have to run a lot of simulation, and see are they treat each uh, the attack the same from different people or not. You have to make sure what has been written in the document is actually implemented on the real life. Otherwise, you will have a big problem with the quality of delivery that you, you try to deliver. 
Integrate to the business, definite operation. This is what they are doing. Try to build use cases for them. Uh, but with some community, this is what we are doing currently. We, we exchange information, learn a lot from yesterday and today. And definitely, I'll try to, to deliver what I have to other people to learn from it. This is very important as well. And the last, but not the least, is build effective, uh, attractive environment. We are working in very exhausting domain. Any mistake, it will impact us mass massively. So people, if they're not working, they are not having fun, this is going to be a huge problem. Let them, this is like a gaming. We are, we are looking after attack, what they are doing. Let them very um, interesting to work in this area. Build the right environment that they let them love to be working inside. Otherwise, you will face a lot of problem inside your quality of delivery. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions or? So it looks like we got a question back there. Um, thank you for the great presentation. I have a question regarding automation. So you mentioned uh, automation and manual threat analysis or threat hunting. Um, so my question is, in your opinion, what do you uh, recommend the percentage of automation in, in regards of threat, uh, threat analysis or threat hunting? The automation of your work? No. Um, so regarding? Excuse me? Regarding what? Yeah, I'm regarding sorry. threat analysis, threat, uh, um, um, like searching for threats. Uh, so, so uh, okay, what I understand from automation, is it, uh, it's, a, uh, it's something that you have to do in order to reduce the amount you're going to spend to do your repeated task. So uh, first thing in my mind is the 24-7 the, the the threat monitoring and response. This is something you're doing this day by day, so you have to automate this. And in addition to that, um, the thing that you, it's not related to this area, but sometimes you are responsible to send a weekly report to X. So this is something you're going to access inside your email and try to write the, the information, to try to have that information and send it. Try to automate this. I, I'm not putting automation has a specific scope. Anything you do it repeatedly, automate it. But definitely, you have to look if this is possible to, to, to automate it or not. But mostly, most of the cases is possible to be automated. Uh, if I understand you, do your analysis, it should be automated or not, right? The collection of logs that you will do your analysis should be automated. But at the end of the day, I need people to take a look on these things. It's not easy for people uh, to, to the machine do the analysis for you. But the collection of logs, uh, data from ADR, from, from threat intelligent feeds, from different areas, is going to be automated. And then take a look on it. It's not going to take time for you to understand if this is wrong or right. And then the action should be automated. But I, I always prefer to the analysis work it should be done by the people, not by machine in this area. Anything else? Wow, thank you very thank you. much, Yasser. Put it in there. Wait one second, we'd like to give you an award, a Center of Excellence Award. Oh, okay. Take a quick picture with you if you don't mind. Thank you for your contribution. It's a Thank stewardship you. award. Thank you for your Thank contribution you to the maturity of cybersecurity Thank in the you. kingdom of Saudi Thank Arabia. You. Well, then, happy Thank you very much, Thank you very much. for helping the community. What a great presentation. Thank you, Yasser. That Thank was awesome. Thanks.